Okay, we're going to fill up with fuel for the first time. It's 179.9 for diesel, so we'll see how that works out. But one thing that impressed me, that's the glove. Because I don't, I've got huge hands, and every time I go to a fuel station, the gloves never bloody fit. So I'm pleased to say this one fits. Welcome back. We're at Lake Garda, and we've just arrived at an air. Um, it looks like a lovely air. It's got services. We need showers. We've been a few days off grid. Everyone needs to get through the shower. Um, but electricity here is included, whether we use it or not. So let's get that plugged in. Are you it catching mosquitoes in here? I am, yes. And you're letting them all in. <laughs> right, let's get this electric hooked up. Electric lead is in here. There we go, new electric lead right there. One thing I only learned about a year or so ago is to always plug it in the van first. Because if you plug it in the wall first, then you're walking around with a live lead. So, van first, then into the wall. And you should always unreel all the cable, otherwise it will build up some heat. So, right, let's check the electrics on. Yeah, it says leisure batteries, 14.5 volts, and I've got a little symbol up there. So the electric's on. Did I hear you cussing then? <laughs> you don't like these blinds, no? no? I'm not a fan of silver blind, in, internal blinds like this. Um, They're a fast. I like the ones that are metal, uh, no, magnetic and go to the metal around the outside, but these, you know, we've got great big gaps. Mm. <laughs> where it doesn't go flush, so. Try and get the magnetic ones for the buzz. Yes, let's do that. And one thing I don't like about in here is how bright the lights are. It's, like, it's on or off, you can't dim them. And they've got them under here as well. And now just look how bright that is. You should be able to dim them. I'm quite grateful I can see things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like these bright lights like this. No, not at all. I usually have them on real dim, don't I? Yes, you do. <laughs> so we'll turn these off to start us. There you go. Maybe put something over that and cover that. Put some dimmers on. <laughs> That's all we ask. The thing about teenagers is they're always hungry. So it's... 20 past nine this evening and they're hungry again so we've done a little plate of antipasti enjoy we are at a fantastic air and i can't wait to show it in the morning um but we are on electric hookup tonight for the first time um and Lindsay's going to be able to use her hair straighteners tomorrow no she's pleased about that but knowing we were going to do some off-grid camping i brought with us um a little inverter i got a 300 watt inverter that plugs in the cigarette lighter adapter here and that's been perfect for being able to plug some low wattage 240 devices. So top tip, bring one of these if you're going to um, rent a camper and you're going to want your 240 sockets to work when you're not plugged in. And just to make it completely clear, no, my hair straighteners didn't work on the, th on the 300 watt inverter. I know that is going to be dead obvious to some people. Steve is probably over there rolling his eyes at mentioning this. But I didn't know for definite that it wouldn't work. They're going to pull too much power, aren't they? Well... <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> they did. So, oh, see, he was right. Another one I brought with us is this device here. Every time I leave the country, I take this with us. This is fantastic. I've got all the connections on here. You've got the American, you've got the UK, you've got uh, European, um, and then you can plug things in here. But also, I've got 100 watt PD in here for the USB Cs, and I've got a normal USB A there as well. So, this is just the best travel adapter. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to something like this. Whether I can find this exact one, I'm not sure. But I'll certainly put a link in the description. Right, I'm going to get on with some editing now, but I'll pick you guys up in the morning. Good morning. Well, I've just had a lovely shower. Um, it's an interesting shower system here, and I will show you them in a minute. Uh, but Linz is out there having a stretch right now. But I just need to do a little bit more work on this video and upload it whilst we've got Wi-Fi here. So I'll get on with that and pick you guys up in a bit. Honey, I'm trying to do some voiceover, and that guy is... Too noisy outside. With How very dirty. Streamer. I know. How you, very dirty. But you are looking beautiful in your summery dress. <laughs> even though you haven't done your hair yet. See, I'm sure, and it's not gone out yet, I'm sure there'll be comments about me being a bit of a princess needing my straighteners, but you know what? He sees why. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it just? This guy out here with a streamer, come on guy. Right, have you managed to rustle up a few bits for the boys breakfast? Oh yeah, I've been no. washing up from last night first. <laughs> okay, then we'll wander into town. Yes. Okay. And have a little explore. It is glorious out here, isn't it? 
it is. <laughs> it absolutely is. It was really lovely stretching in the sunshine. So this is the top end of the air. It's fairly empty. A few people have checked out this morning. Let's go and have a look around here. So there's electric to every pitch, whether you want electric or not. It's included. Now they're not massive, they're fairly spacious pitches, you can see between the bollards there. So they're not crammed in like very, very tight, but uh, they're certainly not six metres apart though. And there's plenty, plenty of available space here. I'd imagine in the summer this place will be packed. Okay, here is the shower and toilet block. Eddie's trying to work out the showers, but it's one euro for four minutes in the showers. And they're ample, although could do somewhere here to put your clothes. And there's some outside sinks here, more outside sinks, and a couple of toilets here, ladies and gents. There you go. There's a service pitch over here, which was actually very busy this morning. They were queuing all the way up there, about five long. And it's probably one of the most fanciest service pitches I've seen. We could spray water out of there. Flush it dry away. Pretty neat. Here's the bins, plenty of bins. And right here is the barrier system for getting in. And you just pull up, Take a ticket and the barrier will lift up. So right here is where you pay for your ticket. And right here you can get some change for the showers. Like I say, one euro is gonna get you four minutes in the shower. It's got Wi-Fi on site, it's not the fastest, but there it is, they give you the password for the Wi-Fi. And right here you've got a, a snack machine and soft drinks in this side, and there's a coffee machine here. And it's just 70 cents to get a coffee. So again, great value. And right here's the tariff. So it's five euros and you can come in for one hour. You can empty your gray, empty your loo, fill up your fresh and then it's an extra euro per hour after that to a maximum of 24 euros for 24 hours. Now I think that is the perfect pricing structure. Sometimes you might wanna just come in here, drop your gray, empty your black, fill up your fresh, five euros, and then get back on the road. That's perfect, there should be more sites like this. And it's, you know, with electric for 24 euros for 24 hours in such a place at Lake Garda, I think they've got the pricing spot on here. Have you done your hair yet? <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> After all these years, that is a loaded question, Mr. Radford. I've just uh, shown them around the site. And I think 24 euros, 24 hours, including electric, is the right price here, isn't it? It is. And I love the fact that you can pop on and service your pitch here. Now, interestingly, I was just reading about the Caravan and Camping Club, and they are advertising that at the moment for their sites for £6.75. You can go on use it for up for three hours and use all the facilities just to service your van and then you could go off and walk camp there as well. Perfect. Especially if you can plug in as well and top <coughs> up a battery pack, that would be good as well, wouldn't it? It would. I don't know if that's included. Oh, okay. I all don't right. know. Especially with the, the debate about um, electric and metering right. on campsites going forward, which I think is a brilliant idea. I think someone who is... Um, as Matt put it, Motorhome Matt did a podcast about this recently, um, someone who's in a tent and just charging their phone shouldn't be charged the same pitch, especially now, the same fees as someone in the great big motorhome who's recharging up their, their batteries and everything as well. Uh, so I think metering is good. Yeah. We've just had a lovely 10 minute walk down from the air into Pescaria del Garda, which is this beautiful, beautiful town on Lake Garda. So lovely. It's beautiful here, isn't it? It's gorgeous, Look, absolutely stunning. I'd imagine this place will be heaving in the summer. Well, we know it is, because last time we were here, we couldn't find anywhere to park up for the night, could we? Right, now there's boat tours going out, so maybe something to consider. Yep, definitely. Let's go and see if we can find Eddie and get some lunch, shall we? Mm -hmm. Lunch was delicious and the view was gorgeous. I had the calamari, which you have to have at least once when you're on holiday. It's the rules. I don't make the rules. George had, oh, he had pasta bolognese again. <laughs> Steve had lasagna and the big boys both had bowls of chips because they've they're just not that hungry at the moment. Now we're gonna head back to the camper van and make sure we are fully packed up because we need to do some shopping. So we got back to the van, packed up and headed to the service pitch to drop the gray and empty the toilet. Okay, Look, empty the loop. It's not that full, emptied it yesterday. There you go. Right, let's hit the road. Look at her all summery in a lovely outfit. Hey, love. Hey. L'importo da pagare è di 24 euro. 24 euro. 24 euro. Arrivederci. Arrivederci e grazie. Excellent. But the advantage of this one, as we said, is it's you can check out late if you're on a campsite they want you out by like 11 12 o'clock yeah you just pay by the hour right so it's perfect right grab your tickets so we can get out 
Prego. That was easy. It was super easy. So we're going to head to Lidl, which is just up the road two minutes away because we have run out of food and drink. Well, no, we've got some meal food, but we've got no snacks. I've got a list. We're shopping to a list today. <laughs> Although I made the list yesterday before we ate all the food. <laughs> <laughs> we, the teenagers. Yay. I can turn a couple of these into like pizza bases with pesto and mozzarella and stuff that we've got. Ooh, look at you going all Italian. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We're heading to Switzerland next, you know that. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> it could be really expensive though. You want orange cheddar. Okay, well it's no Cathedral City, but come on, get it in. Look, 139, 139, 175, 219, 219, 259. 199. Such a selection of cheap wine, but I don't know what any of it tastes like. We'll just grab a couple and hope we get a good one. Hopefully we've got a good bottle in there. How much is that? 121 euros, which was 104 pounds. Okay. We are absolutely rammed. Look, we've had to use in here to put water and some coke in the bathroom. And we've got up here is full of drinks, water and coke. And the fridge, well, that's pretty rammed with everything in it, of course, trying to keep it nice and cool. So yeah, less storage in this van than ours, I'd say, love. Oh, less everything? Yes, but we have more under seat storage, don't we? I'm often uh, oh, losing the, the back, bottles yeah. down the back. And these steps here as well, three of us have tripped on these steps. You just forget that there's two steps there like that and it's only half a step. But you look gorgeous in your summery little outfit. Look Thank at you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, shall we hit the road now? Let's do it. And leave the sun behind? No. <laughs> Switzerland, here we come. Let's go. 82 kilometers later. Okay, it's a long drive. It's three and a half hours and I am shattered. I'm only about an hour or so in, but I've pulled in to have a little rest. And I want to point out these service areas that they've got in Italy. I mean, there's camper service areas at every service station. I mean, I've seen them around Europe but nowhere near as many as Italy has at their um, service stations. So you can drop your, your grey, um, probably empty your loo there as well, and fill up with fresh water. And these are at every service station. They're brilliant. I'm going to take a note out of their book. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. Yay. How much is that? 10 euros. Okay. It seems to be about 10 euros an hour on the motorway. It's what we're thinking. So the plan is to drive over the Simplon Pass, one of the few passes I've yet to drive. And we're hoping to find a stop for the night right at the top. Oh, it's the border. Oh. The first thing we came across was the start of the border from Italy into Switzerland. Now, crossing any country's border in Europe on a motorway is just boring. Does it say welcome to Switzerland, is it? Yeah, there it is. Uh, there's the sign. <laughs> Switzerland kids. We love finding small mountain roads to cross the country's borders as they're much more scenic and interesting and this one didn't disappoint. Now many alpine passes are seasonal and can be closed during bad weather whereas the Simplon Pass is pretty much open all year round. As we started to climb we could see more and more snow on the ground and you could feel the temperature dropping outside. Before long we arrived at the top and I pulled into the hotel car park. Is this it here? Can I go play in the snow? Yeah that's the idea mate. Yeah! We spotted another camper parked by the toilets, but that wasn't too level, so I turned it around and found a more level park up opposite the hotel. Right, I found us a park up. It's right by the hotel restaurant, and it is freezing out there. I've got shorts and t-shirt on. Have a look at it out here. <laughs> There's the snow. <laughs> All around us. There you go. But we've just fitted in off the road. It's snug, but that'll do. We can park there the night, but we better put the heating on, I think. And <laughs> I better get changed. But George is excited to come out and have a snowball fight. Who's going out for a snowball fight? George? Yeah. You going out for a snowball fight? I'm running right now, mate. <laughs> One frozen wasteland later. I just went out there in and? like six feet deep, proper <laughs> icy snow. And I, well, I got stuck in a sinkhole because I like properly jumped into it. It's like a knee height <laughs> and my shoe falls off. <laughs> so I have so... to call Eddie because he's like on his way back already, okay? I have to call him and he's, he comes in and he lifts it back out 
and I have to nobble, I think it was this foot, nobble through the snow to the pavement without a shoe on. <laughs> it was so cold. Okay, this table doesn't swivel around like ours. Um, it does drop down, but it also flips around like this and over. And voila, you've got twice the size table. So we'll be all eating around this tonight. That's the five of us sat around here and we'll easily fit six, seven people around this table. And this lovely dish you put together. What have we got, my love? Just a simple pesto pasta. <clears throat> and then I've put some focaccias and made them into a pizza-y thingy something to go with it. I'm limited to how much pasta we can cook in the pans we have because they're quite small. So forking it out with some bread as well is a good idea. Good morning, love. Good morning, my love. How are you? I'm okay. Yeah. We've had a bit of a lane this morning. We have. We're not sleeping terribly well. Um, it's not our bed, is it? I know in our van it's our own bed. So maybe we sleep better there. George is excited he's out in the snow this morning, isn't he? I know, it's about six foot deep and he keeps saying he goes on it and then it cracks and then it sinks. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but the shooting outside. The soldiers, the Swiss army are nearby. So right. they, they, they practice up here quite a lot according to the Search for Sipes reviews. Whoa, I'm sure you'd have heard that one. They've got guns as well as knives, eh? I, apparently. <laughs> I wonder if they've got multifaceted guns. <laughs> You're impressed with the, uh, with the water, you said? Yes, the hot water was really quick to get hot and it stayed hot overnight even though it's probably looking at the snow minus four or five out there. But the heating's been on all night, maybe that's kept maybe it warm. Maybe that's helped, yes. Yeah. But it, I only boosted it for a couple of minutes. I, I plan to wash up using this because we had the heating on and it was all getting a bit hot and I was like, oh, I can't warm more water up. Um, but actually it was quicker than using the kettle. And I had it set to 14 last night and it was probably too stuffy in it. Again, yeah. we've still not managed to get this van cool enough to sleep in yet, have we? <laughs> so we've got the roofs open here and it's freezing out there. Yeah. <laughs> so it is nice and warm in here, isn't it? It's toasty. Yeah. It's lovely. It's not quite our diesel heater, though. No. You enjoying it out here? Oh, of course I am. Look over there. What have you been up to? Show oh, me. Wow. Oh, okay, let me Go show on. you. Whoa, did you hear that? Gunshots. They're coming to get you, George. Wow, that's been going on for some time, that is. Not sure if the mic's picking it up, but that is loud. Echoing around. Hey, buddy, at the top. Hang on. <laughs> awesome, bud. Oh. Fantastic. You're having way too much fun as usual. Yeah. <laughs> and right here is the sign that explains you need to pay two euros per person for tax for staying up here. It's tourist tax. The view right over the valleys is absolutely stunning. So we'll, we'll put a link in the description to this stop. It even has toilets here. And there's a soldier over there. But here are the toilets and they're open 24 hours. Go and have a quick look at them. Ladies, disabled, and the gents. There you go. And they even have toilet paper. Facilities here, very good. And here's the Bellevue Simplon Cum Hotel Restaurant, which I'm afraid is closed right now. I'm guessing that'll just open in high season. And this is where we parked last night. It was perfect. It was the flattest place I could have uh, stayed here. Over by the toilets there's a bit more on a, on a slope. And we don't have levelling blocks with this. Right, we're about to hit the road. If you want to wake up with a breakfast with a view at the Simplon Pass, I'm going to put a link in the description below, guys. It is beautiful here. And it's actually quite fresh this morning. It's not that cold. Um, also, don't forget to pay your tourist tax. Um, kids up to 16 or one euro over that it's two euros per person and you can pay that online there's a uh, there's a little sign and there's a link to a qr code where you can pay that right next we're heading towards cern the boys are off to get mcdonald's while we pop in to get a few more supplies at the lidl we don't need a lot we just need fresh bread and then there's other things we're going to get as well because we're here Spring in Switzerland is glorious. This is beautiful. Beautiful, isn't it? And look at you rocking all them colours, <laughs> eh? 
You're still hacking these with a pound coin? No, 50 cents. <laughs> 50 euro cents, no Swiss. Yeah, 50 cents. <laughs> right, we don't need much, right? No. And the Swiss Lidls are the most expensive ones, aren't they? They were. What we realised when we did the, the last tour of Europe is that I did a poll of Lidl's because I judged every country by their Lidl. Um, and the places where it's more expensive, you get better customer service. So Switzerland and Austria were top for that. Germany was highest for being cheap, but boy, were they rude. These yogurts that we've just discovered are amazing. Best yogurts ever. Yeah. Well, I've not tried them yet. <laughs> and another thing we've had to put up with Coke Zero because they've got no Pepsi Max, which just isn't on. All right, you have trouble paying then. <laughs> yeah, you needed the card, not the app. So that's fine. That's okay. So that was 57 francs. Guess how much all that came to in pounds? Uh, 50 quid. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 50 pounds and seven pence. Just for some snacks and bits. Yes, it sure is expensive in Switzerland, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's fine. How was your McDonald's, boys? Yeah? Oh, oh you're still eating it. How's your McDonald's, Georgie? Yeah? Is it a million pound McDonald's? <laughs> McDonald's in Switzerland. Expensive. Like 25 quid for three cheeseburgers and three flurries. Right. Quite expensive. Mm. Just still. A little treat for you. A dime McFlurry. This is to die for. Fantastic. Mm. Okay, the Lidl right here is right next to the VW place and we've just noticed they've got some ID buzzes. I want to remind you that this is how ours started life. With these wheels, not the bumpers like that though. We had colour-coded bumpers. But I'll be intrigued to see how nights have been getting on without conversion whilst we've been away. So we're on our way down the Simplon Pass and I realise I haven't told you why we've done the Simplon Pass. It's one of the last Alpine roads that I've not driven yet. So I definitely wanted to do that because I've, I've driven pretty much all the others. Um, and it is very, very rewarding. But the main reason you'll want to do this pass is it's the uh, is to avoid the, the expensive tunnels. The Mont Blanc tunnel, for instance, um, in this motorhome would be 199 euros to go through the Mont Blanc tunnel. And in our motorhome, it's over 400 euros um, if you've got six wheels which is ridiculous. So, um, and why would you, when you've got such a beautiful, beautiful drive over the Simplon Pass? So guys, if you come in this way, avoid the Mont Blanc tunnels and any of the other expensive tunnels, come over the Simplon Pass and enjoy these beautiful, beautiful views that it's got to offer. The drive down the Simplon Pass is simply stunning. I can drive these roads all day and not get bored. Oh my God, look at the bridge. Oh, that's where you needed to put your drone up. Just look at that view and the blue skies. But alas, if we stay on these roads, it's going to take us a lot longer to reach our destination. I've just got some AdBlue because it's been asking for AdBlue. Um, I've also just topped up the fuel over there and I've had to buy a vignette. It's a one year vignette and that's 40 Swiss francs for that. Can't get a week one, you can only get a year one. Never mind, we're only going to use the motorways for like a couple of days, but it is what it is. Make sure if you're coming to Switzerland and you're going to use the motorways, get a vignette because I did uh, look at the option of not using the motorways it was going to take us five hours but this way is going to take us two hours 15 minutes and lucky the next person who gets to hire this van because it's already on there in our last van because we traveled through Europe several times we had vignettes from a couple of different years and we also had clean air stickers for different countries as well we had France and Germany at least um, and we were just stacking them in the window. I love that. It looks really nice. But when we sold the van, they went with the with the van as well. Um, last time we came through Switzerland, it was 40 Swiss francs, which is exactly what it cost again today. At today's exchange rate, that's 35 pounds and seven pence. Exactly. <laughs> um, and they really do save you a lot of time because to avoid the motorways on this route, it was over five hours. But going via motorway, it's just over two and a quarter. So it's saved a lot of time. And actually, if you're going to be coming in and out of Switzerland more than once, then it's definitely worth getting as well. Right, I've driven for a few hours now and we've come to CERN, which is where we were heading. And we're due to spend the day there tomorrow. Um, but it's a very impressive place. As you drive through, you can see the buildings inside of the road. Um, it is very, very impressive. We've gone in and checked. Um, and as long as we're there early in the morning, we should be able to get everything done that we want. So what we've done now is left there. We was going to stay there the night, although we're not sure if we'll get moved on. So I've had a look on Park for Night I've had to go to, not search sites. 
and I found somewhere just 10 minutes up the road back into France. So we've um, driven through the traffic and through the border back into France. I love it how these borders in Europe um, are just seamless. There's no stopping, you just drive straight on through, no passport checks. But anyway, we're going to find this park up for tonight and then uh, head to CERN in the morning. So I'm going to leave you guys there. Um, but do make sure you subscribe to the channel to find out what goes on in the next video.